Amen. Good to see so many people in here this morning. Welcome to the Fair Havens Independent Baptist Church. We've got a huge group with us this morning for a baptism. We're very excited about that. And boy, I really enjoyed the Sunday School Hour this morning. If you were here, I'm sure you enjoyed your class as well. If you're not involved in the Sunday School, let me encourage you. It is a great time, great time to get together as a church and study the Word of God. We had a wonderful time this morning, didn't we, Brother Sands? We just had a wonderful time. Uh, don't forget that uh, Tennessee lost yesterday. And so, uh, and, uh, and so Pastor's wearing his red tie, okay, in shame. So. <laughs> All right, uh, we better pray and get the Holy Spirit back in the building real quick. Let's pray. Father, we come to you now, Lord, and we thank you for this uh, time. I pray, Father, that you meet with us in a mighty way this morning. We're thankful that we have a baptism. We're excited that uh, someone, Father, has come to you by faith and has decided to follow you with their lives and believers' baptism, Father. We're thankful for that. And, uh, Father, we're just uh, looking for special manna from heaven this morning. I pray that you feed us, Father. Uh, fill our cups up, and uh, Lord, that you'd even search us this morning. See if there be any wicked way in us, and help us to get right, Father, so that we can be mightily used of you. Father, we love you, and pray you bless our service, bless our pastor as he brings the message. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. All right, let's go ahead and stand. Let's stand up this morning. We're going to sing a good old hymn. Let's stand up and sing. Well, good morning. It's a beautiful day today. He just... Well fit into the song we're going to start with this morning, Sunshine in My Soul, page 222 on our hymnal, page 222, Sunshine in My Soul, amen. <laughs> There is sunshine in my soul today, more glorious and bright than glows in the earthly sky, for Jesus is my light. Oh, there's sunshine, blessed sunshine, when the peaceful happy moments roll. When Jesus shows his smiling face, there is sunshine in my soul. There is music in my soul today, a carol to the King. And Jesus listening can hear the songs I cannot sing. Oh, Blessed sunshine, when the peaceful happy moments roll, when Jesus shows his smiling face, there is sunshine in my soul, hallelujah. There is springtime in my soul today, for when the Lord is near, the dove of peace is in my heart. The flowers of grace appear. Oh, there's sunshine, blessed sunshine, when the peaceful happy moments roll. When Jesus shows his smiling face, there is sunshine in my soul. There is gladness in my soul today. And hope and peace and love For blessings which he gives me now For joys laid up above Oh, there's sunshine, blessed sunshine When the peaceful happy moments roll When Jesus shows his smiling face there is sunshine in my soul. You can be seated. The choir will sing this morning.
from the straight and narrow way I was drifting every day out upon the waters deep and wide but it all is over now glory light is on my brow and my soul is on the winning side the Lord. I'm on the winning side. Are you on the winning side? Amen. That is, if you're a child of God, forgiven, your sins forgiven, now there's nothing between you and the Lord, man, you are on the winning side. There is no way you can lose. You go, you have a home in heaven. Jesus went to prepare it. Hey, just waiting for the time when he said, hey, come up hither. We're gone. We're gone. Amen. I love this song that we're going to sing the, this morning, page 235 on our hymnal. He set me free. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. The scripture says, if the Son has made you free, you are free indeed. Yeah. Amen. 235. Who <laughs> once like a bird in prison I dwell, no freedom from my sorrow I fell. But Jesus came and listened to me, and glory to God, he set me free. He set me free, yes, he set me free. He broke the bonds of prison for me. And glory bound my Jesus to see for glory to God, he set me free.
right, as you find in your seat, back to your seat, we'll go back to that second verse. Second verse of 235. I hope you can sing with confidence that second verse. Now I am climbing higher each day. Amen. Are you all ready? All right. <clears throat> Now I am climbing higher each day, darkness of night has drifted away. My feet are planted on higher ground, in glory to God, I'm homeward bound. He set me free, yes, he set me free. He broke the bonds of prison for me. And glory bound my Jesus to see for glory to God. He set me free. All right. Let's sing the third verse before um, the ushers come forth to receive the offerings. Tithes this morning. All right. Goodbye to sin and things that can find. Not all this world shall turn me around. Daily I'm working, I'm praying to it. Glory to God, I'm going through. He sent me free, yes, he sent me free. And he broke the bonds of prison for me. I'm glory bound, my Jesus, to see for glory to God. He sent me free. Amen. And you may be seated this morning. Brother Randy, would you pray for our offering, please, sir? Amen. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Miss Cindy is going to be singing for us this morning, so just hang tight uh, while she sings for us. are so troubled you don't think you count at all waves may seem like mountains and your boat is all so small but somewhere past the clouds waits a new day to begin sometimes it takes a storm to calm your storm within. Sometimes it takes a storm to know you need a shelter. When the anchor's in your life, 
disappear without a trace. Sometimes the wind will rage before you sail calm waters. Sometimes it takes a storm to find a hiding place. They were drifting in the darkness. The sea was all around. They cried out for the master, please save us or we'll drown. Jesus heard their cries and mercy stilled the wind. Sometimes it takes a storm to see the sun again. Sometimes it takes a storm to know you need a shelter when the anchor's in your Disappear without a trace. Sometimes the wind will rage before you sail calm waters. Sometimes it takes a storm. Find a hiding place. Sometimes the wind will rage before you sail calm waters. Lord, thank you for the storms. For I found my hiding place. Lord, thank you for these storms. For you are my hiding place. You are my hiding I've spent my life, all my years, walking up Calvary's hill, and I'm so glad there's a cross that I can hold to when I have a need to 
be feared the trips that I make oh they're all worth that climb cause at the top is Jesus the Lamb oh he trades all my burdens I bring to the cross for the victory to carry back down and I've spent a lot of time at Calvary kneeling before the Lamb and His blood makes everything whiter than snow when I come just as I am and as I am walking back down Calvary's hill oh, my feet what they're not touching the ground for the heart that was burdened on my way up it's shouting victory walking back down <clears throat> as I walk up that hill to Calvary the reasons are different each time I may need forgiveness just to be lifted up or I might need healing divine <coughs> as I walk up that hill with my load of despair and lay it down at the foot of the Lamb. Oh, the heart that was burdened on my way up, it's shouting victory, walking back down. And I've spent a lot of time at Calvary kneeling before the Lamb and His blood makes everything whiter than snow when I come just as I am and as I am walking back down Calvary's hill oh, my feet well, they're not touching the ground for the heart that was burdened on my way up it's shouting victory walking back down see all these folk here. We're baptizing Katie again next week, so <laughs> just to let y'all know that so y'all might be here. Uh, now it's great to have you here with us. Uh, Miss Katie, that is some great support right there. That is some great support right there. And keep in mind, you got a church that supports you too, okay? All right. Well, I'm heartbroken <laughs> Heartbroken today. My team, what happened was Texas had to leave right the first half. Y'all didn't get that, did you? <laughs> I know some had got it. I know some had got it. I said they put Texas in that their you know, orange and white uniform, so they put them in there in the first half, then they had to go home. So anyway. <laughs> we took it graciously. All right. Well, we're going to pre we're going to preach this morning on kind of an unusual title and text, I guess. Uh, if you're with me in Romans chapter four, 
go to chapter 4 of Romans. Verses 18 through 25 speak to us greatly about faith. I'm hung up on a couple of things. I'm hung up on faith, and I'm hung up on the judgment, the judgment seat of Christ. We're going to talk about faith today. I've titled this message, Ben Gay, Pampers, and the Word of God. Ben Gay, Pampers, and the Word of God. We're going to see all those in just a minute. In just a minute, we're going to see all those. Because we're going to deal with a hundred-year-old man who's got a, he need, has a need for Ben Gay. We're going to see a baby come into the picture. And, of course, we're definitely going to see the Word of God. That's what we come here for, okay? So you just hang with me because as, as I study Abraham and the progression of Abraham's life, it's amazing to me how this man, he loves God and his faith in God. Uh, it's no wonder that Paul used Abraham here as a, as a supreme example, again, to prove the, that salvation comes about simply because of faith, okay? These last few verses of this chapter uh, 4 uh, teach us some truth that uh, we can't depend hey, we can't depend on keeping the law to save us. We can't depend on uh, good works to save us. Uh, we can't depend on, uh, on anything external to save our souls, okay? Paul points here as it is, as he has been throughout this uh, whole chapter, that salvation is produced purely, purely by faith, okay? Uh, in, 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 in any effort to teach us how faith works, he's doing it here. Paul is going to recall one of the greatest miracles, I think, of the entire Bible. One of the greatest miracles are here is in the, uh, of the Bible. I'm referring to the birth of Isaac birth of Isaac. So you say, what makes this birth so special? Well, his daddy was 100 years old and his mama was 90 when he was born. Guinness Book of World Records tells us that the oldest the oldest mother on record is, is Ruth Alice Kisher. Uh, Miss Kisher uh, gave birth to her daughter at the age of 57 years old. There is a report that back in uh, the 1776, a lady by the name of Ellen Ellis uh, at 72, gave birth to a, to a child. They're just teenagers compared to Satan, okay? All through this chapter, Paul has been uh, applying, kind of trying to apply the faith of Abraham to prove his point that men are saved by faith. Most of you know uh, I'm hung up on that, hung up on faith. How, how, now he's going to tell us what kind of faith Abraham had. Uh, it was faith in the promise of the birth of Isaac, okay, at 100 years old. It was, simp it was simply faith in what God said he was going to do, what God said he would do. He had faith in that. It came down to faith in God that brought salvation to Abraham. There's, there are lessons that we can learn here from this story concerning Abraham. We're going we're gonna, to we're gonna just... Look into this today, and, and you think on Ben Gay, Pampers, and the Word of God. Let us pray. Father, we come to you. You know our condition today. You know the condition of the souls in this building. Lord, I pray if there's one person here today that doesn't know you as personal Savior, or not sure of their destiny, Lord, I pray today be the day of salvation for them. I pray they'd come by faith and faith alone. Faith, faith not in this preacher, faith not in this building, faith not in any external things that they can do, but in faith in the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. You are the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh to you except through the Father, to the Father, but by you. So I'm praying, Lord, today that, Lord, someone would come to you today. I'm praying, Lord, also that as we leave this place, we'll understand better about having our faith in the right places, in the right things. Thank you, Lord. We love you. In Jesus' name, amen. First thing I put down in verses 18 and 20, let's read them. Look at it with me as we read here verses 18 through 20 of chapter 4 of the book of Romans. I am in there, aren't I? Let me make sure where I am. One more page. Okay. It says, Who 
against hope believeth in hope that he might become the father of many nations according to that which was spoken, so shall thy seed be. And being, not, and being now weak in faith, he considered not, look here, his own body now dead, he's 100 years old, when he was about to, uh, about 100 years old, neither uh, yet the, de the deadness of Sarah's womb. Look here what we got, the direction of his faith. Uh, it says here, it says here, verse 20, I don't think I read verse 20, excuse me, I'm sorry. Uh, verse 20, he, he staggered not at the promises of God through unbelief. Staggered not at the promises of God through unbelief, but was strong in faith, but was strong in faith, well, hey, giving glory to God. Again, he, st he staggered not. He, he believed, that simply means that Abraham did not waver. He believed, he believed without reservation that God is able to do and keep his word. That, that was a promise. If you go back to Genesis and read Genesis through Genesis 12, 1 to 2, 13, chapter 13, 15, 17, all through there, you're going to see those verses take, uh, hey, they teach us the incredible truth that God, so, hey, supernaturally, supernaturally caused Abraham and Sarah to be able to have a son. Basically, Abraham directed his faith toward God. Even when it, even when it seemed that, that that was impossible, it was totally impossible. See, the bottom line is this. It all boils down to whether or not we want to believe God or not. Whether we really want to believe God or not. Whether, it, hey, whether it is in salvation or any area of our life. In your area of life, our life, the result of your faith will always be determined by the direction of your faith. Faith that is placed in God is faith that will always re be rewarded, y'all. Let me repeat that. Faith that is placed in God is faith that will always, always be rewarded. Look on the duration of his faith. When, when, when the promise was given to Abraham, he was 75 years old. This is 25 years later. Even then, it must have been seemingly impossible at 75. Okay? However, when the promise was last confirmed in chapter 17, hey, he was 99 years old. It must have really seemed impossible by then. Yet his faith did not waver. It says he staggered not. He wavered not. The Bible tells us that he believed God. He believed God. This word is in the tense that suggests that he believed God when, when he received the promise and, and he kept on believing God until the promise was fulfilled. He kept on. That's the, that's the kind of faith that sees mountains moved. Let me, let me just encourage some of you who have maybe been, been waiting on the Lord to move in your life. He hasn't forgotten about you. He hasn't forgotten about you. If he, hey, if he made you a promise, then you can, you can count on that promise, okay? He'll fulfill it. He'll fulfill it. Don't give up. Don't despair. Just trust in the Lord, and he will, hey, he will cause it to pass, okay? Again, verses 18 through 20, we see the determination of this faith. There are, there are three truths revealed about the faith of Abraham that serves as an encouragement, I think, to those who, who must live their lives in dependence upon God. First thing, he, he refused to listen to reason. Look what it said there. It said, hope against hope. Hope against hope. Abraham, Abraham had to have had his eyes on all on on but one thing, the great one, the Almighty God, is who he had his eyes on, nothing else. If his eyes were on his circumstances, then he had, he had every reason to doubt the promises of God. If he were any, if they were on anything else, on any other thing, he would have doubted. He could have easily said, "I'm just too old. I'm just too old." Sarah, she's shriveled up like a prune. She's just too old. We've tried to have a baby since we were young. It, it hasn't worked out. Hey, it's physically impossible is what he's saying. 
Apparently, Abraham refused to deal with that negative stuff. I wish many of us, I wish many of us would refuse to deal with negativism. A negative person is a person who's always tearing down. They're never building up. I warn you to listen. Hey, don't listen to the ten. I heard this message just a few days ago. Don't listen to the ten. Moses sent out twelve spies. Ten came back with a negative, negative report. Hey, it caused those people to wander 40 years in the desert. Out in the wilderness. It caused them, ten men caused millions of people to have to wander in the wilderness for 40 years because they were so negative. Those ten spies caused that. I think it would be wise for us to look at Titus chapter 3 and verses 10 through 11. Turn back there, just write the book right before Hebrews, and here's what it says. Let me read it to you. Because this, hey, I think this, I think a negative person is actually a heretic. Okay? Listen to what it says. A man that is a heretic, that's a person who's practicing religious uh, uh, heresy. Hey, a, a man that is a heretic after the first and second uh, admi, uh, admi, uh, admi, excuse me, admonition, reject, just you get away from them, stay, reject them, get away from them, knowing that he that is such is subverted, that means he's undermined he's stirring up stuff, and sinneth, and he's looking at her, and he sinneth being condemned uh, of himself. Sad how easy, how easy we allow negative people to tear us down. Hey, even when we've had God's promises. Look here, y'all. Look here, y'all. Look here, y'all. God, Brother Silas, God had already promised them that land. He just wanted them to go in there and see it and spy it around, check it out. Hey, just like any good, hey, just when you're going into battle, hey, you're going to check things out before you go in there. You're going to know where you're going to be going, all right? You're going to know what you're going to be facing. You're going to know what the terrain's like, okay? So, hey, he wanted to go. Ten of them come back, Miss Linda, with a negative report. Oh, there's giants up there. What they've just said, hey, can't trust God. Can't trust God. No, don't believe what God told you. We can't do it. We can't do it. Two men, Caleb and Joshua, said we can do it. And we can do it because God said we can do it. Not because we can do it, because God said we can do it. Okay? Hey, isn't it, isn't it wild? Abraham, Abraham, hey, was trusting God's promise. Trusting his promise. He knew that God, hey, would, could deal with the impossible. And he can. What a lesson for us to learn. Verse 19, he refused to look at the reality of things. Abraham refused to look at, at his situation. What happened to those ten spies was they looked at the situation. They looked at the circumstances. They looked at all that, and they didn't look to God. He's looking at the, hey, he's looking at the, hey, Abraham ain't looking at the situation. He, hey, he's looking at, he got his eyes on God and God's promise to him. Can you imagine this, this, this old couple being, hey, how they must have prepared for this birth of this baby? Dr. Ray, Dr. Ray Pitcher. He gave, a, he gave a, the chronological order of the 25 years before the baby was born. At 76, they went and bought a cradle. At 78 years old, makes a little, hey, makes a list of possible baby boy names, okay? At 80, orders a, hey, orders a supply of super absorbent pampers. Hey, 85, hey, goes hunting with, uh, with his buddies while they throw a shower, baby shower for Sarah. At 86, he puts up wallpaper. I've been there in the baby's room, okay? At 90, subscribe to the new parent magazine. Hey, 93, he and, hey, he and Sarah go to Lamont's classes, okay? At 96, he drives a practice run over to the hospital, okay? At 98, he packs the suitcase and sets it by the tent door. But look here, at 99, he scratches his head and says, I wonder if God was just kidding me. Did he doubt? Sure he did. He's human. He's human. 
Over in Genesis 17, 17, it says, Then Abraham fell upon his face and laughed, and said in his heart, Shall a child be born unto me that is a hundred years, hey, a hundred years old, and shall Sarah that is ninety years old bear? Sure he doubted. You would have too. Abraham laughed when he heard the news that, that the baby would be born. Sure he and Sarah, hey, they, they, they thought this promise was not going to happen. They thought it was just a practical joke. God don't play joke shop. God don't play jokes. Yes, he doubted, but he also acted on his belief, not on his doubt. Hey, does that make sense? Faith is not 100% certainty, y'all. Faith is, hey, faith is belief mixed with unbelief, but action is taken on belief. When we doubt, the doubts win. When we doubt, the doubts win. When we doubt, the doubts win. That's not faith. When we trust, hey, when we trust the word of God, in spite of our doubts, and act on it, that's faith. Abraham was a man who believed and, and, and doubted really at the same time. But he acted on faith. He acted on faith. How was this faith revealed? Well, he changed his name. You go back to Genesis 17, 5. It says, neither shall his name anymore be Abram. He was Abram. He, 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 but his name should be Abraham. For, a fa hey, a father of many nations have I made thee. His name, hey, was Abram, and that meant exalted father. But the promise of this new name, his name Abraham, meant the father of a multitude. Many, many, hey, hey, many thought this silly old man, hey, had, had fell off the wagon or something. He just fell off the truck. Abraham certainly had his doubts yet, but he did not let that sidetrack him. Don't let your doubts sidetrack you. Don't let your circumstances sidetrack you. Hey, keep your faith. Keep your faith. He kept, he kept, he kept on for God, and he won the victory, y'all. What does that say to us? Fight a battle. There's a battle coming. Fight the battle. Hey, faith is a battle. Faith is a battle, okay? Hey, faith is a struggle. Keep your faith. There'll be doubts, and there'll be a time when, when we will feel like giving up, and those doubts will take over. But, but real faith never gives up, y'all. It always rests on the knowledge of God that he will do exactly what he's promised to do. You must trust in God, Amen. not in man. Verse 20, verse 20, he refused to lose his reward. Again, here he is. Uh, he lived 25 years with the knowledge of one day God was going to give him and save a child. He knew it, and he refused to let go of that truth. He, he, he obtained that promise because he responded to God's promise of, uh, by faith. I don't know what, what you need today from God. I don't know what you need from the Lord this morning. But if you have that, hey, if you have his promise, Hey, you just hold on, okay? You just hold on. Learn what faith is. Faith, hey, Hebrews 11.1. 1. Now, faith is a substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. If you can see it, that ain't faith. If you've got to see it, that ain't faith. If you've got to be able to touch it, that ain't faith. Learn that nothing else pleases the Lord. Uh, hey, over in chapter 11 of, of Hebrews, verse 6, but, hey, but without faith, it is impossible to please him, to please God. It's impossible without faith to please God. If you go to Romans 14, hey, we're right in here, but if you'll go to Romans 14 and 23, it says, and he that do, hey, doubteth is damned if he eat, because he eateth not, the, uh, hey, he need, eateth not of faith. But whatsoever is not faith is sin, sin. See, we got to learn these lessons, y'all. Hold on. Hold on to your faith. Let's move on. Verse 21, 22. Look at it. Abraham's faith was well pleased. Verse 21. 
and being fully persuaded that what he had promised, God had promised him, he was able also to perform. And therefore, it was imputed to him for righteousness. Look at, look at that. Imputed to him for righteousness. Pleased with God's promise. His, his faith was pleasing. He was pleased with the promises of God because he knew that they were, they were good. He, he was good for them. God was good for him. He could, he could do it. What, hey, what he, hey, what he, hey, what I see is a man who did not, hey, he didn't, he didn't rest on his, how do I get on his doubts? He simply, he simply took the Lord at his word. This, look here, y'all. This is the word of God. I heard a message just the other night from a man, and I got a little confused when I first heard it. I thought, what's he, what's he saying here? He said, you spend 10 minutes in this and two hours in prayer, and you're going to get more from this in 10 minutes than you got two hours of prayer. This is God talking to you. This is God communicating with you. We don't spend enough time in it. That's how we don't know what God wants or what the, I hear people all the time. Well, I just don't know what the will is of my life. I just don't know what the will is of my life, what God wants me. I can tell you how you find that out. Get in this. Get in this. Read the Word of God. I feel myself I'm in the perfect will of God today. I fought it for I fought it for 14 years. And then I surrendered to God, and God Hey, it's pleased that I did what I did because that's where he wanted me 14 years earlier. Hey, you just need to get in the word of God. There was a day when man's word was his bond. Hey, this is his bond. That day's still here if it's in reference to the, hey, the, word, the word of God. What about verse 21? I just read, pleased with the, hey, his performance. He knew, he knew that what God had promised to do, God would be able to do it. He didn't, he, 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 he didn't look at the problem and then downsize God. He simply took the Lord at his word and knew that if God said it, he'd do it. That's why Abraham could, could take his teenage son Isaac up on Mount Moriah, willing to offer him willing to offer him as a burnt offering. Do y'all think about that? God had promised him this son. Now God said, I want you to sacrifice your son, your only son. I want you to take him up there and massacre him, kill him. But here's why he did it in Hebrews 11, 17, and 7, uh, 17 through 19. By faith, Abraham, when he, by faith, oh, I'm hung up right here. By faith, Abraham, when he was tired, offered up Isaac, and he had hey, and he that had received the promise offered up his only begotten son, of whom it was said that in Isaac shall thy seed be called. Account, hey, accounting that God was able to raise. Looky here, he said, this had never been done before, y'all. <laughs> he said that God would be able to raise him even from the dead, from whence also he received him, hey, hey, in a figure. How could he believe that God would raise him from the dead when he'd never, ever seen anybody raised from the dead? By faith, by faith and the promise of God. Again, I tell you this morning that you can count on God. He's able, hey, he's still able to move the, hey, move the power he has to fit your need, what you, whatever you have. He's still God this morning, y'all. He's still God. Hey, he's, 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 the, he's, the, hey, he's the king of kings and lord of lords. You can trust him. Look here, verse 22 says it pleased with God's plan. I guess so. Abraham's faith was, hey, was well pleased with God. Hey, because the Lord took, hey, took the faith of this old man and, and credited his account to, in heaven with righteousness, imputed righteousness. But another way God saved, hey, 
hey, put, saved Abraham because of, because of that very thing. See, God's plan for Abraham is still God's plan for you and I. He just wants you to take him in his word, act on his promise. Hey, rest in him, believe in him, trust in him. That's all he wants from you and I. Look on 23, 25, verse 23 through 25 says, Now it was, hey, now it was not written for his sake alone that it was imputed to him, but for us also to whom it shall be imputed if we believe on him that raised up Jesus our Lord from the dead. Wow. Wow. Preserved. Preserved. Faith was preserved. There's this promise. This promise. He, 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 we're, we're told here that, that the promise was not just to impute righteousness on Abraham, but also on everyone that exercised the faith. Not just any faith, but saving faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. There's a lesson here for, of salvation for us. Abraham acted on the, on the light he had received and was, hey, was declared righteous by God. He was, hey, he, he was saved by faith the same way we are today. However, the object of our, of our, hey, of our saving faith is different from Abraham's. Salvation has always been by grace through faith. However, Abraham took God at his word concerning the birth of Isaac and, and, and hey, and, and, few, and future multitudes that would be that would, hey, even be the family of, of, hey, the whole earth. Couldn't number them. Couldn't number them. Abraham believed in this promise of God. For us to be saved, we have to react to the light that we have been given as well. I said it just Wednesday night, I think it was. You're, you're, you're so accountable for what you sit under, what you hear. You're so accountable for it. And one day we'll stand before Christ and be judged for that. Now, this light that we have received, hey, we got to act on it. If we're going to be saved, there is, hey, it isn't just merely faith. It's faith in Jesus and his sacrifice that saved us. You believe in his death, his burial, and his resurrection, okay? Katie has done that. Katie has done that. In Acts 4, 12, it says, Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men, whereby you must be saved. Hey, what about, what about, again, what about John 14, 6? Jesus says unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. You, you, you can talk about God all you want to. You can praise God all you want to. Ain't nothing wrong with that. But Jesus is the way. Jesus is the way. He's the truth. And he's the life. Your faith is in, hey, you got faith in something this morning. I don't know what it might be, but you got faith in something. You better have faith in Jesus. Hey, hey, what about it preserved as a person? Hey, the promise boils down to one man, Jesus Christ. He's the central focus of, of every promise that has ever been given. He is the one through whom all nations of this world will be blessed. He is the one who, he is the one who, who died on the cross. We heard it, hey, we heard it already this morning. Died on the cross. We heard it in song already this morning. And rose from the dead. Are you, are you, hey, are you there? He's the one who paid our debt, our sin debt, and rose from the dead as our Savior. He is the focus of all our faith. And if he's not, your faith's dead. Your faith's dead. Our faith stands upon two, two pillars of truth. Jesus died for our sins, and Jesus rose from the dead. Had he, not, had he not come out of that tomb, we wouldn't have, we wouldn't have salvation. He had to come out. He had to come out of that tomb. Listen to Romans 10, 9, 10. Most of you know it by heart. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart, in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, Thou shalt, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. 
What did Paul write in 1 Corinthians 15, 3 and 4? For I deliver unto you first all that which I have received, how that Christ died for our sins, according to the Scriptures. According to the Scriptures. Okay. And that he, and that, hey, that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day, according to the Scriptures. Okay. This is the Word of God, y'all. We ought to treasure it. We ought to cherish it. We ought to read it. We ought to read it on a daily basis. You need to read it. You don't, don't just lay it around until Sunday and let the preacher read it. Don't just lay it around and let the dust collect on it. Pick it up. Pick it up and read it. Heads are bowed and eyes are closed this morning. Again, where's your faith this morning? Where's your faith? With all the honesty that your heart possesses, can you truly say that you're trusting the Lord Jesus Christ for your soul's salvation? Paul, Paul's conclusion to this section of, of Scripture makes it clear that nothing else and no one else, nothing else will work. Salvation must come through faith in Jesus Christ. Abraham believed and he was saved. Abraham believed and he was saved. Hey, it wasn't works. It wasn't the law. It wasn't circumstances. It was hey, it was faith. It was faith and faith alone. Faith and faith alone. Where are you this morning? Where's your faith this morning? Have you, have, the, have you got the faith to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ for your salvation? All you have to believe is this right here. He took the cross. He died on that cross for you and I. When he, uh, when he rose from the dead, after he was buried, he rose from the dead three days later. He sits at the right hand of God the Father this morning to intercede for you and I. He's on the right hand of God the Father this morning for you and I. You ought to say amen right there because that's a real blessing. But can you believe that in your heart? Can you believe that? If you can, you can be saved. Somebody will take a Bible. Be glad to take the Bible and show you how you can be saved, okay? How you can know, how you can know the Lord Jesus as your Savior. If you've already been saved, praise God for that. But still, but still, even though you've been saved, where's your faith? Where's your faith this morning? Those who are coming for baptism are coming now. Brother Ruben's going to come lead you in a song as we get prepared. They get prepared. Let's sing a song. That I hope you, when you leave this place, you go with the assurance that you have the victory. And that victory is only found in Jesus. Amen. Page 120 on our hymnal. <laughs> victory in Jesus. I heard an old, old story How a Savior came from glory How he gave his life on Calvary To save a wretch like me I heard about his groaning Of his precious blood's atoning then I repented of my sin and won the victory. Oh, victory in Jesus, my Savior forever. He sought me and he bore me with his redeeming realm. He loved me ere I knew him and all my love. Me to victory beneath that 
cleansing flood. I heard about his healing, of his cleansing power revealing, how he made the lame to walk again and caused the blind to see. And then I cried, dear Jesus, come and heal my broken spirit. And somehow Jesus came and brought to me the victory. Oh, victory in Jesus, my Savior forever. He sought me and he bought me with his redeeming blood. He loved me ere I knew him, and all my love is to him. He plunged me to victory beneath the cleansing blood. Ready yet? Uh, let's go on the third one then. I heard about a mansion he has built for me in glory. And I heard about the streets of gold beyond the crystal sea. About the angels singing and the old redemption story. In some sweet day I'll sing up there the song of victory. Oh, victory in Jesus, my Savior forever. He sought me and he bought me with his redeeming blood. He loved me ere I knew him and all my love me to victory beneath the cleansing flood.